Hey guys, Archie Luxury, Archie Luxury on an Emirates 777. I'm just talking watches and uh, drinking coffee. Talking watches and drinking coffee. In business class on Emirates. Hey guys, it's Archie Luxury, Archie Luxury on the Archie Luxury channel, the Paul Pluto channel, and the Elite Broadcasting Network, powered by Elite Broadcasting. Okay, guys, today I want to talk to you about, I want to talk to you about how the fuck <clears throat> can these fuck-ups in the watch industry happen? What am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about things like the Audemars Piguet Code 1159. I'm talking about the new Aris, 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 $7,500 skeletonized pilot watch. How the fuck can these big companies be so off the money? How the fuck does it happen? And before we do that, let's do a quick whist, 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 whist watch check. I'm wearing a Patek, a Grand Classic from Patek Philippe. I am wearing a 5127. 5127. Guys, I wanted to tell you this story here. How the fuck is it such a big disaster? How is it such a huge disaster? Surely these people... I mean, these are wealthy businessmen. They're CEOs. How the fuck do they get it all wrong? And i got to tell you, because I've had a bit to do with wealthy individuals and CEO types. And the honest answer is, this is what happened at AP and at Aris. They basically... They're yes people. They're alpha males. And they surround themselves with yes men. <clears throat> now, what I mean by that is, if you don't agree with these guys, over time, they've fallen away. They've fallen away. So what happens is, these CEOs, they have an ego. They all have an ego. They think these ideas are very good. When they show them to their advisors, their advisors aren't going to say, that's a bit fucking stupid. Their advisors are going to say whatever they want to hear. And it happens time and time again. I'll give you an example. I want to relate this. A good friend of mine, okay? A good friend of mine. Um, and in this example here, her family in Japan, he was a naval officer. He was the highest ranking Japanese naval officer not to be executed after World War II. Okay? So but basically, his boss who was executed, he basically said, Can you please save these people here? They were just following my orders. So um, this particular person I know, uh, his... Um, family. They are the Ito, I-T-O, long established family, like sort of Japanese, uh, like a duke in Japanese society, you know, like, like royalty, aristocrats, Japanese aristocrats. And as I said there, his grandfather, his grandfather was the highest ranking Japanese uh, official not to be naval uh, official not to be executed. And he actually said something very interesting. He said, you know, a lot of people, He, because he was in the fall of Singapore. He was in Singapore and he said, you know, a lot of the Singaporeans wanted to come across to the Japanese side. And they, they didn't like the Imperial British. And, and I, I accept that there could have been that situation, but let's be completely frank and honest. When the Japanese were in Singapore, they tried to get them to change to Japanese language, which was a fucking disaster. They, anyone who, hey, hey, 
General Ito, General Ito came up and said, how do you find uh, conditions? Hey, hey, hey! No, no one's going to have the balls to say, it's fucked, General Ito, it's fucked! No, 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 no. They would say, hey, sir, hey, hey, hey! And uh, even General Ito, he, um, he felt that many of the women who worked in the brothels, this is the Japanese run brothels, yeah, we're talking war crimes here, he said a lot of them were prostitutes who were paid. Well, uh, General Ito, you fucking idiot! You fucking inept fuck! Um, they were kind of slaves, okay? And they were ripped off and not paid. So for you to say these things, Maybe nobody wants to actually tell you the fucking ugly truth. Let's move forward. And i got to be completely frank with you. At AP, the management team, they designed this new watch, the code 1159. They wanted it. Okay, it, it, it was funky, but it's just dear as fuck. No steel? I mean, that's... I mean, Jaguar. Jaguar did a similar thing. They went from the E-type Jaguar, then they went into the XJS, and they said, right, this is a sports car, no wood. Well, hang on a minute. Their core value is leather and wood. That's their core value. They moved away from it, which was stupid, stupid. And, you know, no one had the balls to sort of had the courage to tell these people Fuck! The Emperor has no clothes! They didn't say that. And that's what happened with the Code 1159. All these junior mid-level executives, they could realise it would be a very career-limiting move to tell the fucking boss at AP it's fucking expensive, it's going to be a flop, you fucking idiot! No, they didn't say that. And... You know, it's kind of funny. It's kind of funny. Um, yeah, yeah. Just They just don't listen. And I think for Ralph, the CEO at Oris, the same thing's happened. He's got this idea. We're going to compete against IWC and Breitling. Well, they're not really doing too well now, Ralph. They're not doing too well. And instead of being in the one to 2000 US dollar price range. We're going to bring a watch out at seven and a half thousand fucking dollars. Ralph, this is a fucking stupid idea, you fucking idiot. No one's going to say that to Ralph. And i got to be honest with you. Have a look. 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 Have a look at all the fuckwits who went to China on Oris's coin business class. Okay? Have a look at all these fuckers there. Rodent 2, Hoodinky, uh, a blog to watch. They were all saying, what a great watch it is. Ralph, they're not going to fucking tell you the truth because you're not going to fly in business class on the next ridiculous release. Okay? Ralph, nobody has the balls to tell you the truth. Ralph, Rolf, Rolf, his name is Rolf. Rolf, Rolf. You've got to fucking understand this, man. You've got to understand this, man. No one's got the balls to tell you. It's a fucking stupid idea. No one's got the balls to tell you because you think it's cool. You live in your fantasy land. Well, let the market kick the shit out of you. Let the market kick you. And this is the whole fucking reason. See, I, many years ago, I tell you honestly, I'm friends with a lot of really wealthy people. They've sought my advice. This is why I am who I am. One of my good friends, well, he, he was a friend. Well, he's sort of a friend. He's sort of a friend. Anyhow, years ago, he met this girl, and he really, he, he, he said she was wonderful, and I was very tactfully trying to say, I don't fucking like this bitch, Okay. I don't like this fucking bitch. That's what I was trying to tactfully say. Nah, he wouldn't listen. Uh, he wouldn't, he didn't fucking, he said, oh, you like, I said, that's not quite right. I'm, uh, I work for you as an employee. I can't tell you the truth. I hate the fucking bitch. I couldn't say that, see? This is the whole problem. And it's the same thing with these CEOs. They release products 
They release product and they're surrounded by yes men. Yes men who don't have the balls to say, that is fucking, fucking stupid. That's right, they don't have the balls to say that. And this is the whole problem. I know a lot of very wealthy people. And I had one of my friends, Toxic Rob. Toxic Rob. Uh, he was a friend for a while. A little bit fucking extreme. But Toxic Rob, self-made man. Blah, 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 blah. And I said, Rob, just because you have a certain opinion, I'm not going to agree with you just because I feel like it. I'm going to tell you it's fucking stupid. Well, Toxic Rob's not my friend anymore. Toxic Rob fucked off. Toxic Rob. Which was good. Toxic Rob was a bit of a pain in the ass. Then, then I had another friend, another friend, uh, they, they don't want to hear, they don't want to hear, they don't want to hear it. Another friend, I told you, I was working for a guy, and he met this girl, and I, I tried to tell him I hate the fucking bitch. I tried to tell him tactfully, no, he wouldn't listen. And this is the whole thing, these companies have these ideas, and they really fuck it up. They fuck it up because they won't take constructive criticism. By the time he thinks it's wonderful, we're going to move Oris up market, seven and a half thousand. Look, you fucking idiot. <clears throat> no one's going to buy an Oris for the same price as a Rolex. As a Rolex, okay? Fuck me dead. Come on. Come on. Can't you fucking work that out yourself? And same as AP. AP. AP completely fucked it up. AP completely fucked up the code 1159. And it's because they're surrounded by yes men. They won't handle the advice. So let me now, Brother Archie in the industry, tell you, AP, you fucked it up. You fucked it up big time. To Rolf at uh, Oris. Rolf, fuck me dead. Fuck me dead. What are you smoking, man? And this is the reality. These people, they're alpha males. If you say no, it's like Elvis Presley. He was surrounded. He was surrounded by yes men. Whatever Elvis wanted, they agreed. It was a great idea because they're on the fucking payroll. I mean, it's simple, man. You've got to understand this. And this is exactly why the whole fucking, these morons at the top, Kennedy was actually a very good president because when he was getting military advice, instead of getting the generals in and asking for opinion, he said, right, guys, you guys aren't going to tell me the truth. I'll step out. You guys sort out what the best answer is and tell me. Because otherwise it's politics, you know, and Kennedy's very smart. He said, I don't want to know who comes up with it. I just want to give me the best answer. And otherwise these military leaders, hey, if you're a four-star general, you know, uh, you want to get the fifth star, <laughs> you know, the way you get the fifth star is doing what boss man wants, it's doing what boss man wants, and that's the whole reason these fuckwit CEOs in the watch industry have fucked it up, the CEO at AP fucked it up big time, the code 1159 is a fucking disaster, now we've got Oris. I mean, Oris, you, you're giving all these boys Hoodinky, a blog to watch, uh, Buck and Jack, all these fuckers. You're giving them a free business ticket. They're not going to fucking tell you the truth. Fuck me dead. This is overpriced. They're too scared. Okay? Ask Uncle Archie. You gave me the fucking pathetic. You gave me the fucking pathetic stick pin, the Oris stick pin, and I'm just telling you to stick it up your fucking ass. And this is the whole thing. You want to know the truth. You've sometimes got to be prepared. Can you handle the truth? You can't handle the truth. You can't handle the truth. This is the big, big problem. And this is why the industry will continue to make big fucking mistakes. Okay, this is the honest truth. So um, that's that's the reason these, these fuckwits fuck the unfuckable up. So uh, there you go, guys. That's my opinion. I'm Paul Pluta, the Paul Pluta channel, Archie Luxury channel, elite broadcasting. Tell me what you lousy, miserable fuckers think of that. Like, subscribe, tell your fuckhead friends, and don't forget to put some really mad.
nasty comments down below. And if you haven't subscribed, hit the bell twice, because you, otherwise you don't get the updates as they come through. Okay, guys, tell me what you fuckwits think of that. Who does Archie Luxury recommend is the greatest grey market dealer in America? There's only one choice, David SW. That's right, guys. I've got to tell you the honest truth. I have for a long time been looking for the perfect answer. Who do I recommend people go to see? Who do I recommend that people can go and uh, buy watches? And I've got to be honest with you, the greatest, the greatest pre-owned dealer for Rolex, Patek Philippe, Audemars Piguet is David SW. David SW. David SW. David SW dot com. That's right, guys. I have been looking for a contact who I can very nicely refer people too. I am not in the selling business. Customer service. I'm too old to sell watches. I'm too old. I like to recommend my viewers to a reliable source. In Australia, I've got some great sources. There's uh, Sydney Watch Exchange with Cove. Ronnie at Vintage Watch Co. Shani. Shani at European Watch Gallery. And in America, who is the best source for pre-owned Rolex, for all the hot models, there's only one person I would recommend, David SW. David SW, David SW. That is the premier source for pre-owned Rolex. I gotta be completely frank and honest with you. Guys, if you are looking for a hot Rolex model, there is only one place you can go to. David SW, David SW, David SW. Let's be honest, guys. There's no point schmoozing, schmoozing, schmoozing the dealers, the ADs. They're just a waste of time. Unless you're going to buy 20 pieces, you are wasting your time. What you're better off to do is pay the market premium and go to a good, good 
pre-owned dealer. Who do I recommend? David SW. David SW. David SW. That's correct, guys. I want to tell you this now. I 100% stand behind David SW. David SW, the greatest pre-owned dealer in the entire United States of America. That's right. The greatest pre-owned dealer for Rolex, for Patek Philippe, for Audemars Piguet, David SW. He even does things like FP Jean. David SW, David SW, David SW. That's right. If you want to buy a pre-owned Rolex, a Patek Philippe, Audemars Piguet, there's only one good source I would recommend. David SW, David SW, David SW. I'm Paul Pluto, the method actor who plays Archibald Chesterfield III, and I'm proud to recommend David SW. See you later. Thank you for watching this channel. <laughs>Archie Luxury Channel. Archie is just what the doctor ordered. Archie is a magic tonic what will make you happy and smile every day. If you keep watching Archie, you may be able to date women like me. Archie Luxury will make you a big success with beautiful girls. Я тебя люблю, Арчи Лакшери, и не могу жить без тебя.